politicians I'll rant for another 45 minutes about politicians who won't say, wow, I made a bad decision. I think I would vote for some guy who got up and said, you know what, I have screwed up a lot. Well, thank you for being honest. You're the first honest politician I've ever seen. You're willing to say you were wrong. If you've read the, movie, the, the book, Blue Like Jazz, it talks in there about watching a TV program about the Congo. Millions of people being killed in genocide. Eight tribes all fighting each other, complete villages being killed and women raped, oftentimes repeatedly. And the author says, he goes and he talks to his friend and his friend looks at him in the conversation and says, so, are we really any different? Are we really any different than those guys? And he realizes that this is a trick question because if he says, no, we're better, we never do that, then you got a lot of explaining to do on why you think you evolved to a higher plane than these other people. And if you say, no, I'm no better than them, that means that inside of you is the same ability to do what those people are doing, and that's pretty scary too. And he has to say, you know, I, I made of the same stuff. There's something inside of us that it is easier to do wrong than it is to do right. Seen that in your life from time to time? It's easier to do wrong than it is to do right. Why is that? Why is it that we have to teach children how to behave? Why don't they just start out in a perfect state? Because there's something really ruined in our very makeup. At some point, we have to say, I have a problem. I'm broken. I need to be fixed. And when we do that, the whole story of the gospel makes such sense because when we say that, then we have to say, I'm sorry, and we have to take responsibility for our actions. No more hiding under, it's not my fault. No more hiding under, well, if things would have been different, if so-and-so would have acted differently, if whatever, I am wrong. There is something broken inside of me, and I have hurt people because of it, and I am sorry. I take responsibility for my actions. That's a painful place to be. But the Bible says if we confess our sins, what's confessing? That's saying, I was wrong. Then God offers forgiveness. To be forgiven, you have to admit you were wrong. And from that, God then says, look, I want to come in and transform your life. Not you, because you've already proved you can't do it over and over again. You've messed up over and over and over again. So, let me come in and do it. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 says, Then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Let me give you rest from trying and trying and trying and trying, and failing and failing and failing. Philippians 1, verse 6 says, I am certain that God, who began the good work within you, will continue His work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. I will finish the work in you. You see, suddenly this starts to fix a lot of the challenges in our society and in our lives. When we say, okay, God, here I am. We can see God exists by the evidence of His work, by His creation. We can see the evidence of God by what He has done in creating in us a longing that is filled only for something greater, only for something that's eternal. We see the evidence of God in the fact that we are created to experience unconditional love. But the greatest evidence of the existence of God is in transformed lives. Transformed lives. And I want to turn my attention to that next group of people here. 